If you've been following the vlog for a while, you guys might notice something a little bit different today. I am in my brand new car. I drove my Toyota Corolla for over 200,000 miles till sadly it couldn't go anymore. So a couple days ago, I got this brand new 2023 Toyota Camry LE and I love it. I'll show you guys some pictures. It's pretty sick. I finally have tinted windows, power seats, car play, and a backup camera, something I've always wanted. So I'm so thankful and grateful that I have a new car. Anyway, today I'm taking taking this car to TCH Dallas to host my first ever live stream. It's gonna be two five, 2K minimum, 5K max to start and then match the stack afterwards. And guys, I've been told there's gonna be some whales in this game. So I'm hoping we can run good. And of course, repping advanced poker training. And if you guys want some amazing deals and discounts on any of their courses, hit the link at the top of the screen right now. I promise they will take your game to the next level. And as always, repping poker bros, the best free play money app in the world. All right, let's take this new car to TCH Dallas. I'll see you guys there. Also, I promised a giveaway for hitting 25,000 subscribers. And if you want to know what the massive, massive giveaway is going to be, please stay tuned till the end of the vlog. All right, just pulling up. Super excited. Haven't played poker in a long time. Cash games, been hanging out with family, so I'm excited. All right, so I made it to TCH Dallas and I was ready to play in my first ever hosted live stream on a Wednesday night. You guys, there is so much to unpack in this vlog, so stick with me, stay with me. I hope you guys learn a lot. And you're not gonna wanna miss near the end of the vlog, I play the biggest pot I've ever played in my entire life. And I've been saying that a lot lately, but that's because we've been moving up in stakes and things are happening. You guys don't wanna miss it. He's got outs on this river as well. So she hasn't faded it if she makes the call. She does make the call. So first off, to kind of give a little background about how the night was supposed to go, originally the game was supposed to be 2-5, but I then found out that the Wednesday game is usually huge. So the players came to buy in for $5,000. I was planning on buying in for about 2,000 to 2,500 until I found out that the game plays a lot bigger. So I wanted to make sure everybody had a good time and I agreed to play a little bit bigger. Little did I know how big this game was about to play. So this was actually by far the biggest, juiciest cash game I've ever played in in my life. So let's get into one of the first hands. So in this first hand I play, the blinds are 5, 10, 25 with a $50 extra straddle and there's a couple limpers from seat 1 and seat 9. I look down at pocket 10s on the button. So in this stream you're going to see me make a lot of adjustments. I knew there was going to be whales in this game but I didn't know exactly who they were or how they played so it'll be kind of cool to go through this journey of this live stream and see me adjust and exploit different things that my opponents were doing. I did know a lot of these players love to see flops no matter what they have and they'll call pretty much any raise size pre-flop. So me having pocket tens here, it's a very good hand and I wanted to raise a little bit bigger. However, I don't love my raise size. I think I could have gone like 200, maybe 225 here in this spot, but I decided to charge them as much as I thought I could get out of them and so I raised to 300. We end up going Texas heads up, which means there was four callers for the $300. So now there is a 1.5K in the middle in my very first hand I'm playing and I'm thinking what in the world is going on? So we take it five ways to a flop of four, five, seven rainbow. There's gonna be a few characters you're gonna see me talk about quite a bit on this stream. And one of them is Mr. eBay Dave. Super nice guy, very fun to play with, but this guy is an absolute maniac in every sense of the word when it comes to poker. So crazy in fact that he got all in early on the stream with five deuce suited all in pre-flop for around $8,000. Carlos checks his pair in open ender and now it's on eBay Dave and I see him grab chips and he puts out a bet of $2,500. Everyone ahead of me folds and now it's on me. With five players seeing this flop, my pocket tens shrivel up so much here. I'm losing to so many hands. I'm losing to all straights, all sets, all two pairs. My pocket tens is just not in a good spot. When eBay Dave bets this big, again, I don't know how he plays, but this flop does smash his calling range pre-flop and my pocket tens have just shriveled up here. The biggest determining factor here is the size that he bet. I can't call half my stack here and then fold the turn and there could be so many terrible turns cards like an eight, a six, and in all actuality, there's really literally no card in the deck we want to see on the turn unless it's a 10. So because of the bet size, how many players are in the pot and the board texture, I have to make the fold. If I had known in this hand how eBay Day played, I might have considered shoving and just getting it in against what was probably likely a pair plus straight draw type hand, which is exactly kind of what he had. So anyway, I put in the fold, he takes down the pot, and now I'm getting a little taste of how this stream is going to go. Yeah, you know, I 
think early on in this stream game, since she doesn't have a lot of history with the players, if it was me, I would definitely be watching everything, trying to get adjusted, because she's just going to be gaining information. Obviously, it'd be helpful if she makes it to showdown, but it's understandable there without a lot of history. Moving on to the next hand, there is the 5, 10, 25, 50, 100 dollar straddle on in this hand. It folds around to me and I look down at king six of hearts in the cutoff. In a normal game, and a game I'm more comfortable in with the stakes, I would be raising this hand. But I decide to limp, see if I can navigate and see some flops with some limps. A couple other players calls and luckily OFC checks his option from his straddle so we go four ways to a flop. The flop is an amazing sight to see. It is queen six six rainbow, so we flop a sneaky trips here with a very good kicker. It checks over to me and we're multi-way on a very dry board. Unless someone has a queen or maybe a smaller pocket pair, it's gonna be hard to get called, so I make a small bet of $125. Carlos actually flops a good hand here. He has queen jack, so he makes the call. The others fold, so now we're heads up and I'm hoping we can get some more value in the hand. We head to a turn card, which is the nine of hearts. He checks it over to me and now after being called, we're gonna wanna go for more value and come in with a catch-all sizing. We wanna target all of his queens. Worst sixes will probably raise and we'll be happy to get it in. No draws come in except for Jack-10 if he floated with a backdoor suited Jack-10 type hand. His most likely hand at this point though is a queen X combination, so I think we can go a little bit bigger now, so I bet $400. He makes the call again, so now my heart rate is going a little bit faster as he calls and this pot is getting bigger and we have a very good hand and I'm just praying whatever the river is doesn't help out my opponent. Carlos decides to lead and puts out a bet of $650. We talked about blocker bets earlier on before the stream, so it was kind of a funny spot. It's a great bet by him because he gets to set his own price against my range, and if I'm at the very top of my range, I can definitely put in a raise here. However, while my hand is very, very strong and I most likely have the best hand, if I raise, I'm not going to get called by a hand like queen 10, queen 8, or worse queens. The only thing I can really hope to get called by is a worse 6, and I feel like I would have heard from a 6 on the turn, so I really think he's capped at a medium to weak queen. I'm just getting my feet wet in the biggest game I've ever played in. I don't want to get shoved on and be sick to my stomach, so I make a somewhat nitty call here and see that he has a queen, and we scoop our first $2,100 pot on this live stream. So after winning that nice pot, my confidence definitely started flowing a little bit better. I felt more comfortable, got my feet wet, and it feels nice to win a pot. In this hand, I'm in the mandatory $25 straddle. There's a couple limps for 25, and I look down at ace, queen of hearts. So I raise, and again, being in the straddle, which is kind of like the big blind, I'm gonna raise to a large sizing because I'm playing against players who wanna see a flop no matter what the price is. So we can charge all their worst hands. And if this happens over and over, and we keep raising when we have the best hand, we're gonna have the best hand post flop a lot of the time and therefore we're gonna print money and I raised to $200. I pick up two collars so now this pot is already $650. We head to a flop of ace nine deuce with two hearts so we flop the absolute world here top pair queen kicker and the nut flush draw. So as you can see in this spot it's about a 50 50 between betting or checking. A lot of times I do like checking in this spot but in this game we're gonna exploitatively bet because our opponents are gonna call us with so many worse hands any any ace, any flush draw, any nine is going to call us. And again, being out of position, betting into two players, we don't have to bet big. So I'm going to go for the quarter pot sizing and I bet $225. Unfortunately, in this hand, my opponents just don't have anything to call with. Sad day, but we do pick up another nice pot. Now we're in the green and we're starting to roll. In this hand, there's the $100 straddle on and there's a limp before me and then I'm on the button and look down at pocket aces. What a dream. It folds around to eBay Dave and he has jack four offsuit. He decides that this is a good hand to put in the three bet so he makes it $1,100. At this point, I'm still not entirely sure how he plays but in the following hands after this one, I finally kind of start to piece together how he plays. So if I would have known that in this hand, I would have elected to just call here and have him blast off and that would have been the ideal, I think best exploited to play in this spot, but I had seen him stack off with some hands earlier
earlier on. So I thought, well, if he has anything decent, he's just gonna rip all in and I would be ecstatic and jump for joy to get stacks in at this point. So I did decide to put in the four bet and I also don't like my four bet sizing here. I raised to 2.9K, but I think I should have made it like 2.5, something like that. Anyway, he can't really do anything now with his hand and he lets it go. Not sure how much extra value I would have gotten the hand, but I think I definitely would have got a flop bet out of him. So just unfortunate that he didn't have a hand we could tango with and we'll move on to the next one, but we pick up about $1,300 without seeing a flop. In this hand, the double $50 straddle is on and it folds to me and I'm on the button with jack nine offsuit. So some adjustments I'm making here, if I'm playing in a normal game, if I'm gonna play the button, I'm definitely gonna raise, but in this kind of collie splashy loose game with a hand like jack nine, me raising here is just gonna inflate the pot. I don't have a very good hand and I'm not gonna generate any folds from me raising. So I decided to limp. Carlos and Hoptown Josh come along. So we go three ways to a flop of seven, eight, 10. So we flop the absolute nuts on a rainbow board. Again, I'm licking my chops because in this game, you can win a lot of money really, really fast, especially flopping the nuts. They check it over to me. I think I could have gone a little bit bigger. However, I don't know what my opponents have. I decided on a bet size of $75. They both come along. So now we head to a turn card. The turn is the ace of diamonds. So now it brings in a flush draw. My opponent Hoptown Josh then leads for $225. Carlos also makes the call. So now this pot is getting a little bit juicy. Now it's back on me. I cannot just flat here. I need to charge all worse hands and hands that picked up flush draws. So I raise to $900. I made a lot of sizing errors in this game and this is one of them. I think I should have made it like $1,500 and really put maximum pressure on hands just like this. They have you know it would be hard for carlos to fold his hand and also josh picking up the flush draw i think i could have raised a lot bigger here but being in this game big stakes a little bit scary especially because anything can change on the river the river brings the worst card or one of the worst cards in the deck it is the five of diamonds so now the backdoor flush comes in it's so likely that one of my opponents picked up a diamond flush draw on the turn and at this point i am praying to the poker gods that they check to me and i can get to a show down, but unfortunately my opponent Hoptown Josh puts in a bet. He does not want this to check through. He makes a bet of $2,200 and I am just sick. Carlos makes the fold and now it's on me. If you've been watching the vlog for a while, you guys have heard me say this many times, an opponent leading into two other opponents out of position in a multi-way pot is just very, very strong. Also, I raised the turn, so he probably thinks it's less likely I have a flush and I had more of a made hand on the turn, which he would have been correct about. He knows I'm probably gonna check it back unless I have a very strong hand. Maybe he doesn't even know my hand was as strong as it was, flopping the nut straight. So I think for quite a while, trying to come up with some bluffs that my opponent can have and I just think it's so hard to be bluffing in this spot. You'll also see me check my cards one more time and unfortunately I did not have the jack or nine of diamonds which means it's even more likely that my opponent can have diamonds. He has to have a flush here. If he doesn't have a flush he would also have to be worried about Carlos having a flush. After I took some time to think about it and made sure about my decision because again these are some big pots for me and big spots for me so I did indeed let my hand go and Hoptown Josh was nice enough to show the jack deuce of diamonds so i was happy that i made a good fold and saved some money on the river i'm not sure if a bigger raise on the turn would have got the job done either so maybe i saved even more money than i realized but i'm not gonna lie you guys after this pot i was pretty deflated after flopping the nuts in a spot where i didn't see how i could lose the hand but poker sometimes be like that <laughs> you don't think you can lose and then poker finds a way to get you on the river but i was also determined to stay focused keep making adjustments keep finding exploits and stay on the grind in this live stream so we're going to move on to the next hand and keep our spirits high. In this hand, the $100 straddle is on and there's a limp to my right and I look down at ace queen offsuit. I raised to 375. eBay Dave is not going anywhere with his king seven of diamonds. OFC calls with 5-3 offsuit so we're headed three ways to a flop. The flop is king 10 8 with two hearts and I have the ace of hearts in my hand. In a normal game, this would be a great board to start barreling with my gut shot, ace high, I block ace king, ace 10, 
I even block Queen Jack, which is some of their draws they can have. I also have backdoor hearts and my gut shot to the nuts, so this is an amazing cannon to start bluffing. The only problem is I have two opponents in this hand who do not fold, so I don't think I have hardly any fold equity on this board. So when they check it over to me, I decide to make an exploitative check back, so we head to a turn card. The turn card is the Six of Diamonds, unfortunately not a heart and no help to our hand. eBay Dave then bets his top pair and he bets $800. OFC folds and now it's back on me. If the turn was a jack, ace, or heart, we could continue in this hand, but unfortunately I'm just gonna let this one go as we're most likely beat by some random pair. I don't want to put a ton of money in at this point against a player who is extremely unpredictable, so I live to see another day and try to lose the minimum in this spot. In this hand, the $25 straddle is on, there's a couple limps, and then I look down at Queen 10 of Clubs and the hijack, a very pretty hand. Unlike the Jack 9 offsuit we had on the button earlier on in the session, this hand we don't mind raising and getting called multi-way because it plays so well post-flop. I decided to raise it up to $110. This is a great hand that plays well multi-way and we can do some things with it. We pick up three collars and head to a flop of ace, queen, jack with two hearts. Not a ton to talk about in this hand. It checks around Top Town Josh. He puts in a bet. OFC calls with his king jack and now it's back on me. We have middle pair. We have a straight draw, but our outs are not clean, meaning if a king of hearts comes, we don't know if we're good because someone could have a flush. Our hand can really only improve if we hit another queen, and even then we don't know if we're good, so it's very likely we're behind at this point, so I put in the fold and we move on to the next hand. All right, here we go. So in this hand, OFC raises to $75 with 4-3 suited when the $25 straddle is on. There's multiple callers, and then I look down in a small blind with pocket eights. I'm ecstatic to see a flop for this price because it hasn't been cheap to see a flop. We go five ways to a flop and I see an eight, but it's followed by a seven and a nine. So the board is seven, eight, nine with two spades, a very, very bad flop for our set as there's already multiple straights available, a flush draw, and we pretty much don't want to see a lot of turn cards. So I check and then eBay Dave bets $200 and now it's been multiple times where eBay Dave leads out of position multi-way as the preflop caller with an open-ended straight draw and pay attention to this because this is going to come into play in the biggest pot I've ever played in my life later on in the stream. He bets and he picks up a bunch of callers including myself because we all have a piece of this board. The turn is exactly one of those cards we don't want to see. It's the 10 of diamonds so now any 6 and any jack make a straight. Our set was already not great on the flop, but now it's downgraded significantly in value. So we know without a doubt our hand is highly likely to be beat by a straight at this point. eBay Dave bets the low end of the straight for $700. Not highly ideal in this spot, especially facing many opponents that could easily have a jack in their hand. So now it's on seat 9 and he does have the jack. He's not in a position to raise here with just the jack because queen jack makes the nuts. So he makes the call and now it's on me. There's $2,600 in this pot. I have to call $700 to win about $3,500. But here's where I feel like a call here is justified even though I know I'm beat in the moment. We do have outs to make a full house on the river. I also know if the board does pair on the river, no matter what card it is, it's highly likely that I will have the nuts or the best possible hand against my opponents. And the thing is, if I do hit my full house and one of my opponents has a jack or someone like eBay Dave is in the hand, I know that I can get paid and we are very deep here. So I justified the call, hoping and praying that the board would pair on the river. But unfortunately, the river is the four of diamonds, so we completely brick out and I'm hating this hand. I'm so bummed I flopped a set and this was the outcome, trying to not get deflated and stay positive. So my opponent in seat nine puts out a bet of 1725. And of course I cannot make the call here. Super disappointing, but you know what? We gotta keep moving forward, keep learning, observing our opponents and move on to the the next hand. In this hand, the $25 straddle is on and there's a couple limps and then it's on me and the hijack and I look down at 8-6 of spades. This is a spot where I'm going to use my tighter image to my advantage and plus I have a hand that can do some stuff post-flop so let's raise it up. I make it $150. Brass Monkey makes the call with his pocket fours, so we head to a flop of Jack 3 10 Rainbow. We flop ourselves, absolutely nothing. We have eight high. In theory, we should be checking here a ton of the time or betting really small, but I'm gonna try and use my image to my advantage. 
and branch out a little bit, so I bet a bigger size of $250. My opponent gets sticky with his pocket fours, so we're gonna head to a turn card, which is a six, so we pair up. He checks it over, and now since I make a pair, I don't think I have to bluff all that often, so I check it back. The river is a nine of diamonds. Luckily, our opponent checks again, so we're happy to get to showdown with our pair. He flips over pocket fours, and we show the eight six, so we got a little bit lucky there. However, if the six didn't come on the turn, I was gonna continue barreling, and we definitely would have got his hand to fold either way. All right, everyone, it's time to put on your seatbelts. You know what's about to happen. Buckle up. We're about to go over the biggest pot I have ever played in my life. So here we go. There's a couple limps in front of me with the $25 straddle on, and I look down at pocket kings. I raise to 175 and pick up three collars. So we go four ways to a flop. I'm praying for a decent flop. Now knowing my opponents at this stage in the night, I know they're very loose, have very wide ranges, and pocket kings is going to fare very well against all of their ranges. The flop is 486 Rainbow, not the absolute worst flop in the world, but not the best as we have a lot of loose players in this hand. So remember what I said earlier about keeping notes on eBay Dave leading on these types of boards? Well, he does it again, and this time, eBay Dave decides to bet $600. This is a pretty big bet into multiple players. Seat one decides to make the call with his gut shot, and now I have a decision. While I think my hand is way ahead at this point, there can be some really terrible turn cards, so I decided in the moment that I would call and then get it all in on the turn if it was a reasonable card. The turn is an extremely interesting card. It is another eight and it brings in the club flush draw. Now, this is where things get a little bit fishy. eBay Dave decides to check now. Seat one checks as well, and now it's on me. Like I said, I think my hand is the best hand at this point. I don't think eBay Dave slows down if he hits trips here. He knows I probably have a pretty strong hand because I've been very tight all night. So I wanna go with my read, go with my gut, go with what I've been observing all night from my opponents. I decided to bet $1,400 eBay Dave does something that I'm not surprised that he did, but at the same time, it was a little nerve wracking. He snap shoves all in. Seat one folds and now it's back on me. eBay Dave is repping pocket sixes, pocket fours, eight six or eight four or five seven for a straight. Like I said, eBay Dave is the kind of player where if he has a very, very strong hand, he's gonna continue betting. I don't see him checking an eight. I have a huge decision on my hand. If I call here and I'm wrong, I am almost dead against any nutted hand he has. So now I have to think about what kind of bluffs he could have in this spot. So he can definitely have an open ender. He can just have like a gut shot with a seven, maybe like five. 5-4, that he wants to turn into a bluff, 5-6, six, 6-7, six, any of those hands I could see him doing something with. Also, he could have a hand like pretty much any suited club hand at this point, like ace-4 of clubs he might do this with because again, he's very aggressive and capable. He's definitely put me in a very tough spot. If I make this call, it's for the biggest pot I've ever played, and if I'm wrong, then I'm really wrong. But after I had noticed how much was in the pot, how much was in my stack, and how much I had already invested, I realized I can't fold. Here's what happened. He's got outs on this river as well. So she hasn't faded it if she makes the call. She does make the call. Nice call, Ash. She's 83% to win. Can she dodge it? So it's time to put in my chips. I grab them and slowly put them in the middle, put my head down, and hope I made the right decision. eBay Dave did something that kind of gave me a tell on the strength of his hand. I hadn't heard him ask to run it more than once all night. Maybe he was just being nice and giving me the option, but my gut feeling said he wanted to run it more than once because because he knew he was way behind and he had a draw. So going with that read, normally I would like to run it twice, especially in the biggest pot I've ever played, but because I got the read that he was probably drawing, I said once, she says, and she dodges it. 10K pot for Poker Face Ash was just like we talked about, that one spot, that one hand. Yeah, and that's the one hand for Poker Face Ash. Yeah, and they, pot. they didn't make it easier on her. You no. know, she really, she played that really well. For those Poker Face Ash fans in the chat, finally a big pot for Ashley tonight. 10K pot headed her way. She's been folding and folding, waiting for her spot. Had to fold the winner a few times. Uh, though, you know, some, pretty, some pretty serious aggression and made the call here was correct, and it's up piles now. It's got to be one of the bigger pots he's ever won, too. That one's making the block. <laughs> oh, 100%, yeah. 
Wow, uh, what a stream, what a comeback. Started off super strong in the stream and then the middle was very rocky, flopped a straight, the nut straight, no flushes available, and then he goes runner, runner for a flush. Then I flop a set of eights and on a very, very wet and dynamic board and couldn't win that one. Unfortunately, they could not pair the board for us, guys. <laughs> um, and then that hand with the kings, man, they did not make it easy on me. I had to make a tough call there against eBay Dave who could really have anything and I'm sure you guys heard the analysis that I gave already in the hand but oh my goodness what a pot biggest pot I've ever won biggest pot I've ever played and the biggest cash out I've ever had that lineup was honestly a dream lineup it was a really great session for me to kind of play very exploitatively when people are playing very loose and cally you have to just tighten up and yeah I was kind of tight but you have to do that and when you're playing against players like that if you fall into the trap of playing loose playing garbage hands things like that you're gonna lose a lot of money really fast especially in those games so I hope you guys learned something I hope you enjoyed it and it was such a great time and I am so so happy to book a win so guys we were in the game for five thousand dollars cashed out with 9,630 for a nice chunky profit of 4,000 something dollars. Anyway, I'm exhausted. I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. If you did, would you do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe? It would mean the world to me. We are just getting started on this crazy journey. It's only up from here. I'm really glad you guys are on the journey with me and sharing it with me. I'll see you guys next time. All right, it is time to do the giveaway and thank all of you for helping me reach 25,000 subscribers on YouTube. I would not be here if it wasn't for your support. So to thank you guys, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. Make sure you click the link at the top or in the description because that's how you're gonna be able to enter. There's gonna be three prizes. So third place is going to receive one month free of advanced poker training, Poker Bros merch, Poker Face Ash merch, and a signed Pokemon card by me and $50 cash. Second place is going to receive all of that, except you're also going to get six months free of advanced poker training and $100 cash. And then first place is going to get all that plus more merch from Poker Bros and my own merch. And you're also going to get $200 cash plus 5% of my next live stream or tournament win plus one entire year of advanced poker training, which is a $300 value. Now you're not gonna wanna miss this because advanced poker training just came out with an amazing new feature on their site and Steve Blay has outdone himself with this. You can now play against GTO style bots. And as you can see here, you're able to see your opponent's ranges, what hands they should have in their range. And the advisor that helps you also shows you the range of hands that you should have and what to do with each hand and it even gives you the frequencies of when you should call, raise, or fold, etc. So advanced poker training is amazing because you actually get to learn while you play. So it's groundbreaking, it's amazing, check it out. And to sign up for advanced poker training, don't forget to click the link at the top of the screen or in the description where you can sign up for the website and get a massive discount if you use my link, Poker Face Ash. The winners will be announced on the following week's vlog, so stay tuned and we'll see you guys next time.